Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to chat with you guys a little bit about rotating through different types of rows, uh, just as accessory movements, because that's usually what we use rows as. We're not maxing on them. We're not doing stuff like that. We are usually using them for other lift specific carryover and primarily for hypertrophy and usually hypertrophy of our middle and upper back although they can have some impact on the posterior chain they can be a grip training tool they can be a limited bicep tool right but i will point out unless you are very very genetically gifted in the biceps you're not going to build big biceps off just rows right not going to happen uh, i'm certainly not in that category so you guys see me doing, I'll have four different rows up in the background and to give you guys some ideas of the variation, you'll see me doing a standard bent over barbell row. You'll see me doing a standing bent over dumbbell row. You see me doing seal rows with my McDonald bar on a bench. And you'll see me doing a chest supported on an incline bench dumbbell rows. And the thing that we need to think about when we're rotating through rows, we could look at it from the perspective of, of weak point training. We could look at it from the perspective of rotating movements for injury prevention. We could look at it from the perspective of maximizing hypertrophy. These are all valid reasons to use different variations of the row, uh, particularly on stuff like the conjugate system that I promote. So one of the things that you need to think about with your rowing is what are you doing with your low back? What's going on with the totality of your training? Because I hate it when people say they just mentioned an exercise outside of the context of what they're doing with their training. How much low back fatigue are you experiencing? All right, if you're experiencing too much low back fatigue, rows where you're standing may be a recovery issue for you. All right, they may be a recovery issue for you. They are extremely helpful for building your deadlift though. All right, they're very helpful for building the deadlift. So in many cases, when you're almost in, in a phase where you're trying to peak your deadlift, these rows can be helpful if you can recover from it. So standing rows in general, they teach you to be better at deadlifts and it doesn't matter whether we're talking about a bent over row like these, we're talking about a pen blade row. Uh, but they teach you to maintain tightness in the low back. They do help work the lower back, the erectors of the low back, right? These are a legitimate, at least isometric posterior chain tool that again has carry over to the deadlift. But if you're in a phase where your low back is, is fatigued, maybe you have a minor injury in it, but it's, or it's handling just a lot of workload that you're struggling to recover from, the chest supported variants are a better idea because then we remove the low back and posterior chain, then we go to purely middle back and upper back. All right, this, this has merit depending on what you're doing with your overall training when deciding which of these you want to incorporate or you can incorporate both in the same week or the same workout, again, depending upon limited resources for recovery. So then we look at things like dumbbells versus barbells, grip width, angle of your torso, all this stuff matters. Okay, you look at one like the seal row that I'm doing to where your, your torso is completely parallel with the floor no upward angle. Okay, as our angle goes up, what happens? The emphasis slowly shifts from lats more to the upper back. Well, what do we mean by upper back versus middle back? Well, lats would be part of the middle back, your lower traps would kind of be in there. As we start getting towards your mid traps, your upper traps, rhomboids, uh, infraspinatus, posterior deltoids, that's your upper back. Well, rows are more balanced. So we would think of like pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs. It's very middle back dominant with far less focus on the upper back. When we do rows with a chest angle that is more parallel with the floor, we have a very good balance, but relative to other rows, they put the most focus on the middle back and the least on the upper. Okay, as our angle goes up, we shift that focus to some extent. Right, so we go more from middle back towards upper back, but here's the thing. It all gets worked. It's kind of like when we talk about with, with bench pressing, that is we change chest angles, right? We change angle of the bench. It puts more of an emphasis towards lower versus upper chest, but it still works the entire chest. In other words, your lower chest still works on an incline bench. Hopefully everyone knows that. And, and your upper chest still gets worked on a decline, but it shifts the emphasis. And it's the same with rowing. So you can still build your back with all of them. 
How about the grip width? How wide do we grip it? Same thing. The closer in our grip is, the more it works towards the middle and the wider it goes, and again, largely due to the bar path, because if we go wider, we have to touch higher up on the chest. We work more upper back. So having a variety of these movements will put different emphasis on things. What about the ability to pronate the hands like with dumbbells or change the range of motion because we might be able to pull it a little further, right? It doesn't hit our stomach or whatever. We change the emphasis around. It changes slightly. So if we change these movements up from time to time, what happens? We get less overuse, right? So even, even if you were to take the dumbbells and the barbell both and compare those in the same bent over standing position, the tendons are hit a little different. There's different tendon angles as far as stuff in the back goes. What does that mean? Well, if we rotate through them, we have less chance of overuse. We have less chance of overuse. It means we get hurt less often. We get inflamed less often. If we rotate through these different variations, we also get more complete development. We get more hypertrophy. Right? What is it I always also say to you that the best, the best exercise for any muscle is to pick two really good exercises for it and you combine them. So you two, do two different types of rows, even if you split the volume equally between them, you're probably going to get more balanced back development with less overuse. It's a good idea. But because we're working these things with slightly different emphasis, Certain muscles get fatigued more or less and get slightly better stimulation on the different exercise out of those various muscles through the back. You're going to get more development. You're going to get more hypertrophy. You're going to get thicker. And if you really need to bring up things like your middle and upper back to bring your other lifts up, this will do it more effectively. Okay. Now, people will also look at that and say, but if you're changing them too often, how do you keep track of it? Well, with a spreadsheet or a pencil and paper. You can track progressive over. You could take eight different lifts and change them every week for eight weeks and repeat that cycle and as long as you are progressing like let's say your 10 rep sets you get slightly stronger every ninth week when you bring that exercise back in because you tracked it are you making progress of course you are so for people who are worried about well how do you know if you're progressing well you track it they're all working the same muscles and if we're taking the muscles to fatigue with appropriate volumes and weights we are stimulating hypertrophy. And if that hypertrophy stimulus is successful, even if you only did that exercise every eighth or ninth week because you rotated through all these types of rows or something, if you chose to do that, I'm not saying to do that, by the way, it's a hypothetical. But if you wanted to do that, you would still know that you progressed because, you know, if, if you did 225 for 10s on it and then you're able to go 227 and a half or 230 the next time you do it again for 10s, you progressed, you had progressive overload there. You rotated the movements. I recommend you usually keep things in for two or three weeks. Me personally, depending on what's going on. But even if you change through these different things, as long as you track your, your workloads, you'll be fine. You're still growing. You still know that you're growing. You're still having progress. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.